Well, good afternoon and uh, welcome to Faith Heroes this uh, Saturday afternoon. Uh, you know, between two and three, it's that time, you know, when we get together and we deal with uh, one Bible character and other supporting characters around, you know, from whom sometimes we have to learn a thing or two. All right. Um, uh, today we uh, taking a look at um, uh, Jezebel, the queen. There is no queen without a king. So we're going to look at what went right with the king to have a queen and with Jezebel. And what is it that God would love us to learn from a, a deadly uh, a queen such as Jezebel, who we, we get to know actually that there's nothing else that she knew except worshiping Baal, you know, back at home in her family. But Pastor Mapumulo is going to help us with the background. And uh, as we look at the book of First Kings, you know, I think the story is laid out in chapter 16 and perhaps um, in, in other supporting chapters uh, thereafter. Okay. My name is Pat Kumafani on Pat Kumafani Conversations. It is Faith Heroes. Today, we'll look at Jezebel. Greetings to Pastor Mapumulo Ngwengi, Siagwamgela Fort. It's good to have you. Yes, uh, greetings, Ngwenya. Greetings to our listeners this afternoon. It's always a pleasure to be here during this yeah. time. Two to and three. Bishop always Joshua look forward Mponga to it. also and in talk. the studio, uh, Marara Maponga. Gentlemen, it's good to have you. Blessings. Okay, Pastor Mapumulo, if you can hear me, um, yes. I, I, would love, I would love you to give us a background uh, into this Bible character, the, uh, the Jezebel character. Why are we studying about Jezebel? Well, today it's a, it's a very interesting day, of course. Sepete uh, sister Jay-Z today. Uh, and, 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 and look at uh, what is it that we can learn from, from her life. Uh, you know, in recent years, the, the Bible scholars have tried to, to reclaim this uh, shadowy female figure uh, by the name of Jezebel. They've tried to rehabilitate, make Jezebel look better and so on. But you know, uh, this is one of the very Can difficult you hear me now, gentlemen? This is a very difficult thing to do because you in the studio. Of her deeds. Uh, but today we're going to look at uh, what she did and and what is it in there for us that we can look at and uh, and say what what can we learn what can we apply in our lives when you read the Bible First Kings chapter sixteen verse thirty one uh, uh, the Bible says and it came to pass as though it had been a trivial thing for the king to walk in the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, that he took as wife Jezebel, the daughter of Ethbal, king of the Sidonians, and he went and served Baal and worshipped him. Now, now what, what makes it uh, uh, difficult with, with, um, with Jezebel, of course, is that uh, comparatively speaking, with other women, she is not a heroic fighter like uh, Deborah. Uh, she's not like a devout sister like Miriam, a cherished wife like Ruth. Uh, uh, but but we still believe that in the life of Jezebel, there's a lot that we can learn. Now, when you look at the text that I've just read, you begin to see that uh, actually Jezebel came from a royal family uh, in, 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 in Phoenicia. But in that land where she came from, they worshipped uh, as part of their religion, Baal. They were devout worshippers of Baal. And, and please make a note of this because this is important as we discuss uh, the life of, of, of Jezebel going forward. That's her background. That's her upbringing. That's where she came from. But for whatever reason, Ahab decides to marry Jezebel, who comes from that background. 
But when you read the story of, of Israel, the story of Ahab, to a certain extent, you can understand, politically speaking now, why, why King Ahab made such a choice. Because this marriage was a marriage of political alliance. And that's very important. That, this was the marriage of convenience. Uh, and so because, because of this union, both countries, both nations uh, benefited. Uh, with military protection, with powerful enemies, uh, 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 that because this area was a trade route. And so for Israel, uh, uh, this was very important because of this marriage, Israel gained access to the ports of Phoenicia and Phoenicia gained passage also uh, through Israel route that cut through the, what they call at the time, the central hill. So, so, so both, both countries or both nations benefited economically. Now, however, this benefit brought a lot of problems spiritually for the, for, for, for the nation of Israel. And so this is what we're going to look at today and say, uh, why did this come about either than the fact that the marriage was a political, uh, this, this was a political convenience for, for both countries, then we're going to talk about what is it that then is there for us uh, to learn going forward. Are you there, Wayne? Yeah, yeah, amazing. Okay, uh, yes. I'm here, Wayne. I hope you can hear me as well. Correct. Loud I and hope clear. you can hear me as well. Yes. If if you cannot hear me, um, then you Bishop Maponga has to come in. I'm battling with connectivity where I am. Yeah. No, I can hear you. I can hear you loud and clear. Can I proceed? Yes, yes. You can go ahead. Go ahead. Um, to, to make it to make the conversation balanced, I would yes. want to I want to look at the at the African version of the story of uh, Jezebel. Uh, firstly, we we learn of a cross-cultural marriage. Yes. So xenophobic issues are actually highlighted right there. Uh, over and above the weaknesses that Jezebel has been labeled and leveled against of worshipping Baal and everything else and being a prostitute and stuff like that. But the record does not actually tell us that... Uh, uh, Jezebel was a prostitute. Over and above the fact that she was actually running the temple where rituals and cultic temple sex was uh, rife, but we don't find it particularly in the text having been involved in that. What is interesting for me on the story of Jezebel is how the Bible story then extrapolates her or reinvents her to become the false church. Jezebel then is transformed from just being Mrs. Ahab to becoming uh, the church of Revelation chapter 20 and uh, 21 towards the end there. Yeah. And this interesting development for me speaks of two things. One, uh, if Jezebel then represented the church at the end of time, a wicked church, then we need to understand what did Jezebel in the Old Testament do? She, over and above many things that she did, one thing I want us to highlight, she orchestrated and worked on a strategy to get Ah Ahab Naboth Spinia. Yeah. Now, immediately when we speak like that, I want us to read that passage as Africans and see how a foreign woman comes to Africa and helps us to kill Naboth. And in the hands of the church, <laughs> Naboth lost his identity. How have the Africans been robbed of their land in the hands of Jezebel, who is the church? In what way has the church been involved in strategically killing Naboth 
and disenfranchising the African from his own land. I would not mix my words, but say it loud and clear that the church, as represented by Jezebel, the hands of the church are dripping with the blood of Naboth. The church was geniusly involved in this transaction through which the African child lost his estate. I'll stop there for now. Okay, I'd, I'd, love us, I'd love us to bring in and welcome Pastor Mboi Kamela, and she has joined us. And, and, I, and I know that Pastor Kamela, being a queen, is a, is a prestigious status in society from a social point of view. Um, being a wrong queen is another subject. <laughs> and I would love you to come in and bring the latest perspective of Jezebel getting married to King Ahab with her background, but getting married to King Ahab and what mistakes happened on the side of King Ahab mm -hmm. that would then determine, you know, that he is overpowered by the queen, um, as we see him soon setting up, you know, a, a temple to worship Baal and, and all of that. The power of women, the ladies' power. Talk to us, Kazlam. Okay. All right. Um, good, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it's quite an interesting uh, <laughs> character that we have today. Uh, <laughs> Jezebel, uh, shame. Uh, this lady, this lady, hey, is notorious. <laughs> I actually looked at your, <laughs> I actually looked at the way you described the, your post that uh, she is uh, deadly, you know, dangerous mm -hmm. and all that. Um, but uh, taking you on exactly what you just said um, about Jezebel and Ahab, this marriage, this marriage. Let me talk about this marriage. Let me say, if there was ever a couple in the Bible not to emulate, get me clear, not to emulate, it is a marriage between Ahab and Jezebel. And I can swiftly say it is, talk about a marriage made in hell. Let me, let me ah. just say that. Ah. Talk about a marriage made in hell. I mean, I mean, Paco, we are talking here about um, you take a weak-willed uh, king and you add on, on, on that, you add a, a, a power-hungry conniving woman. Now, now that both the, 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 the combination, the combination on its own, you know, a weak-willed king add on it a power-hungry conniving woman but now what are so which means um the story of, of of jezebel has to do with power and authority you know the the, the story the storyline itself and and it, i'm so i'm so interested in what um uh, my bishop here is bringing along you know I'm, I'm very curious actually because when i look at it it has it it it, it combines power the abuse actually of power and authority, and, and, and let me state it as Bebwa Patko that um, power and authority is, are those are gifts from God, and someone that has those, you know, they need, they have a responsibility to actually do, you know, to 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 do them in a in a divine, godly way, authority and power. So uh, the, the 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 combination of the two. But now, before I go any further on the on their marriage and what it, you know, what I want to talk about Jezebel. You know, when we talk about Jezebel, the first thing that comes into mind, it is this bad. She's a bad, you know, a bad news, bad news and all that. Now, me being me, uh, Patco, I don't know. Maybe I'm, I'm quite objective. I like to be objective when I look at someone. Um, I was having a debate here at home earlier, an hour earlier, and when I just said to them, you know what, there's good, there's some good uh, juices that we can get from Jezebel. I can tell you, here at home, they said, what? What? Don't come and confuse people here. I said, listen, me being me, 
I like to look at some things. Let me let me tell let me talk about the good qualities of Jezebel. Just in a few minutes, the good qualities of Jezebel that unfortunately she used them, you know, for Baal's glory. Good qualities. I mean, God cannot create an evil person. God creates people, you know, and in each and every one of us, there are good qualities. And so when I look at Jezebel, the first one that comes into my mind is that she had a finely tuned mind. I mean, I'm looking at this woman who had a brilliant mind, but unfortunately, she used it to divide evil plans. Good quality, yes, but how do you use it? You know, um, finely tuned mind. Secondly, she had boldness and courage. I'm talking about Jezebel. This woman was bold. This woman had courage. But unfortunately, she used those attributes to commit murder. Being bold, being courageous, but she used it to commit murder. So it sums up the, 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 the story of, of, of... So thirdly, she had strong leadership qualities. Jezebel, you can say whatever you say. She had very strong leadership qualities, but unfortunately, she used them, you know, you know to, to, to take over the throne. You know, because after the marriage to King Ahab, Jezebel emerges, you know, at, 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 at the power uh, behind behind Ahab. So which means she swiftly took over power because as you can read the story, she implemented a lot of things. And fourthly, she had an assertive personality. Talk about someone who was <laughs> she had a very assertive personality, but she used it to draw people away from Yahweh God, the true God of God. So that assertive personality that she had, she misused it. And lastly, lastly, uh, Jezebel had a, a, had a royal lineage. Remember, Jezebel was a princess. Remember, Jezebel was a daughter of uh, King Ethbel. You know, so she had that royal lineage, but unfortunately, she used it to manipulate her subject. Now, when I look at these good qualities that are unfortunately misused, it gives me an idea that you can have a wife. On the front, she may appear to have all those good qualities, but what, what matters, what matters is what is in the inside of this person. Because when you get married, Either your marriage will build you or will destroy you. Not only your marriage. In this time, we are not only talking about a broken marriage, but we are talking about a nation, you know, which is very disastrous to have this combination. So I felt on, on when I start, let me look at the good qualities, but how they have been utilized. It's dangerous, very dangerous to get into a marriage with someone who appears to have those good qualities and yet behind those good qualities so this is what came into my mind i need to bring in another important aspect here of the conversation the importance of who or what you worship yeah because she's the worship I am. She's not a yeah. girl from the taverns. She's a worshiper. And it's important then that we, we look at the issue of worship. Because all these controversies center around who we worship. Yes. Somebody, some, somebody talked to me about worship. Because we're not talking about a street <laughs> girl here. You, we're talking about yes. someone over Kulele but in Gonzo wrong. Yes. So that we are careful yeah. also what we teach the young people about um, mixing wes different worshipping religious things. Am I making a big fuss about avoiding to mix religions? Uh, well, yeah. 
maybe maybe let, let me just come in uh, quickly here who who bishop raised an issue and both maybe we'll talk about as we go and no uh, uh, about um, the good qualities of uh, sister Jay-Z. and uh, uh, but <laughs> but if you if you if if you look at both comments I see a thread that runs across. I will tell you what thread this is because if if you had an Ahab who was um, faithful in his duty, one as a man, two as a husband, three as a king, would we have Jezebel as we know today? <laughs> now, uh, now. <clears throat> Because when you when you look at um, the background, who Jezebel is? Look, Jezebel was living her life. L look at her, her at her religion. Jezebel was living her life. Jezebel in in Baal's uh, uh, context, she was not evil. She was doing what her upbringing taught her. What that religion brought her taught her. You know, whatever you wanted, you can get. Uh, 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 wh whatever you, 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 you are thinking, it goes. Now, but Jezebel comes to this marriage of Ahab. Ahab comes from a different background. But Ahab does not do what his own religion teaches him. But instead, he allows the religion of, of, uh, of, of, of Jezebel now and and things begin to fall apart to fall apart in Ahab's context and, and and what i see here that is a threat that runs across here is that we have here in fact i must not even say it runs across but i must i must place it right at the door of ahab uh, you have in one hand an identity crisis here you see uh, as much as uh, what's her name? Jezebel was assertive and rightly put. Makamela is correct. Now, Ahab should have done the same, should have been the same, because that was his own territory. Uh, we know that for him to marry her, it was a political decision. It was a, a marriage of convenience, maybe that, that Makamela can talk about as we go. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but I'm saying, if if uh, if Ahab knew who he was, whose he was, uh, and and, and uh, uh, the story could have been different. Now now here are the questions that are uh, 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 face all of us. That all of us we must answer. Question number one: Who am I? That's identity. Did Ahab know who he was? Oh, at, at the time, because if he knew, then he should have asserted himself on who he was. Number two. Where am I from? Where does where where what is his background? Where does he come from? How then should he have yeah. used his background in relation to his marriage? Number three, why am I here on this earth? Why was Ahab there? What was his purpose? The fact that you are a king, what was your purpose as a king? What was your purpose as an Israelite in relation to the religion that he was taught? And then the fourth question: what is it that I need to do or I can do in this life? That is your potential. What was his potential in relation to his kingship, in relation to what he was uh, 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 designed or, 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 or created to do as king? And lastly, where am I going? What's my destiny? And that, these are the questions that all of us, as we traverse through life, that we must answer. And I believe that when these questions are answered, there is no Jezebel that can have a, a footing where we are. And so, but, but I just want to hold it and leave it for them right there to say, look, these are the questions that all of us must answer. Who am I? Where am I from? Why am I here? And what can I do? What am I here for to do? And where am I going? Where am I headed to? Thank you. Okay. Well, the other question that we, need, we may need to answer is, it? yeah, I was saying the other question that we may need to answer is, is there anything called born to do evil? Can can somebody really be be, be born to do evil? 
the bond to disrupt, the bond to mess up um, other people's cause. Uh, can, can, can that be somebody's mission also? Let's go back to the story. Um, Pastor Mbui, you wanted to say something and then uh, Bishop Maponga will come in. Just there, just there, uh, Gazlam Paco, um, that can anybody be born to do evil? Now, if you look at the Old Testament, you know, from the, from, from the beginning, from Genesis, when God said, you will, you will, uza, uza unyatela, i, 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 uza unyatela, i, i, ye, 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 whatever. When, when God was actually declared, God was introducing his plan of salvation. Now, when you take it through in the book of Old Testament, you will find ways where this plan of salvation, the devil fought in each and every episode to try and destroy this plan of salvation. In each and every story, it is not just put just for the sake of adding a pages on the Bible. It clearly shows that uh, there's been the devil behind everything to try and talk. And I believe Jezebel, Jezebel is an agent, an agent that has been strategically put to be able to destroy the plan of salvation. Look at the way it happens. Look at the way it happens when you say, can, can, can somebody just come and do evil? They, they, they can part up if this is their mission. If this is their mission, look at the way it has started. King Ahab, when you start the story, it says, it, even before we talk about uh, uh, Jezebel, they say he is the worst of all of them. He's the worst before the, the, the very ones that were before him. So which means already, as, as, as my colleague Pastor Mapumulo puts it, that... Um, he, he, that, that there's been many missed uh, opportunities for him to act as king. Yes. That, I mean, he, he was supposed to act as king and not allow Jezebel to, to do as she pleases. You know, I'm not sure if it was because of the power of love, because of, of loving the woman, or because a woman is, is, is so powerful that she can make you to lose your mind and lose your position, you know, because when you move away from God, anything can happen. You lose your status, you lose your position, and you give in the nation of God in the hands of Baal, in the hands of Jezebel. Bishop Maponga? Unmute. I will constantly be lifting the conversation to a political conversation so that we, we become relevant. And uh, I'm not doing so uh, notoriously, but with the permission of the Bible, that actually later on plays out the story of the Bible ends up in the hands of Jezebel. The last book of the Bible, which is Revelation, is actually and a manifestation, a reincarnation of the spirit of uh, Jezebel. O only in this particular time, and I, I want the really to push, because I want you to look at it through that window, because we have a character in the Old Testament whom we must study very carefully so that we understand the church of the end times. The behavior of Jezebel in the Old Testament has a direct link with the church which we find in the New Testament, and, and the play of that church becomes very critical because that, that gives us relevance to this conversation of Jezebel. I will not sit here and be sentimental about Jezebel and her Old Testament behavior. I would be sensitive to Jezebel and her behavior in my life today. In what ways are we still confronted with the Jezebels in our own palaces in what way are we confronted with Jezebels in our own parliaments? I'll mention a few pointers just to give us going. The temperature of a nation is always measured by the quality of the church. That's a fact we learn from Jezebel. That when the church slips on its duty, the government goes haywire. On the other end, if the church becomes powerful over the government, 
then you find that it will, the church will force the government instruments to behave as they want. In the story of Jezebel, you find that to be a very strong line, uh, that the quality of a home is measured by the quality of the woman who is in that home. And if the woman represents the church, then it becomes very critical. What is the quality of the woman? Number two, the combination of governments and religion, the combination of Jezebel and Ahab shows that religion actually manages and manipulates political systems. And if we are not careful again, the same context we are discussing of Jezebel, our churches may end up playing into the hands of the political terrain to the demise and destruction of our own people. Thirdly, I want to highlight also that the combination of the state and the church over our land cannot be ignored. Naboth's vineyard is of conversation here. And until we begin to discuss Jezebel in the context of our land, who assisted Ahab to take our land? I want to conclude by saying Jezebel will not change her habits because she has been married to an Israelite. If we again, as Adventist men of us, believe that Jezebel is Catholicism, Catholicism has not changed its behavior because it came to Africa. In the same wavelength, this concept of Jezebel must be understood that we are dealing with influences that are within our palaces. Jezebel is not controlling Ahab from Phoenicia. She is controlling Ahab from the palace. So now you tell me which religions are sitting in our palaces? What decisions are they making? How are they impacting the communities? And above everything else, is it possible that actually we have still have to deal with Jezebel who sits in our midst today? I thank you. Well, uh, thank Very you. Um, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And I, I, I like it when it becomes practical in the analysis and application um, of um, the, um, the panel. I, I see somebody here wants us, is challenging the, the panel to look at um, the power of women in relationships where there is also um, power in government, authority, the power of Eve over Adam, the power of Jezebel over Ahab. The power of women seems to be traced consistently. And it makes it should make those of us in the audience that are ladies never to undermine the power that God has placed on women. Because God would never put a a weak, a, a weak vessel next to a man when he says, let us make him a help meet. It would never be somebody weaker than the man. So we are naive to think that women are less powerful than men. The Bible is consistent, in my view, of stories where women have shown power. They can either be used by uh, the good God, or they can be used by the evil devil. But the power of women is always there. Okay. okay. Uh, uh, Pastor Kamel Mbui, you wanted to come in, Gazlam? Yes, I, I, I will talk about the power of the women because that's where I'm interested in, especially the this marriage of Ahab and 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 and, and Jezebel. But I I'm interested in what my bishop said earlier. Um, earlier, even before she, I mean, he spoke about what he has spoken now. Um, I am subject to correction. He can correct me or the panel can correct me. I don't think Revelation, the book of Revelation, I don't think it is referring to the church um, and, and Jezebel as Africa and foreigners. I, I, don't, I don't think Revelation is referring to the church and Jezebel specifically Jezebel as Africa and foreigners, because that, that, that would suggest that would suggest that the final church will only be African. That will give that notation. The final church will only be African. And if you are not African, you cannot be part 
of the church in the end time. So I, I have I have I have a slight slight uh, problem. That's what I'm saying. I'm subject to correction. As far as I'm concerned, Jezebel is the spirit of paganism. Baal was murderous. Baal, the one that was introduced by 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 Jezebel, was bloodthirsty. Baal was vengeful. Baal was selfish. Baal, you know, when you worship Baal, you become like Baal. So this is the spirit of Jezebel that 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 we need not to miss out. As we are becoming relevant, we are becoming practical, we also do not need to miss out on what is it that we are talking about. There are two women in conversation in the book of Revelation. On chapter 12, you will find the pure woman, the clean woman who is dressed up in the in the sun with the moon underneath her feet and etc the one who is going to deliver a child by the time you get to chapter 13 the beast that comes out of the water to chapter 17 the woman that sits on the beast with a cup full of abominable things painted and etc you will not miss it pastor Pamela, that that woman we are being who is being described in chapter 17 is actually the church and i'm glad i'm talking to a fellow theologian what I'm struggling with, can we identify that church? And I'm speaking from the African perspective. And deliberately, I want to outline that what has been the involvement of Jezebel in our parliaments? What has been the involvement of Jezebel in our homes? What has been the involvement of Jezebel on our estate and on our property? The Europeans and everybody else, they can theologize from where they are. But from where I am sitting, I cannot fail to see the involvement of Jezebel in how we as Africans have actually lost our own land. Having said that, it is important to notice the behavior of Jezebel in the Old Testament and try and juxtapose it with the behavior of our government and present churches and see in what way is the church killing its own members, the cup full of abominable things, and again, sitting on a beast and having adulterous relationships with the kings of the world. Now, when you begin to understand it in that perspective, you see that the story of Jezebel stops just being a story in the Old Testament, but it actually has a magnifying glass, which then helps us to focus at the issues, political issues, economic issues, health issues, estate issues, fashion issues, as we are nearing the end of time. So basically I'm saying, it's not me saying that the Bible says in the end time, this woman, the spirit of Jezebel will be at play. Who is this woman? How is she functioning? Where is she working from? Who is she killing? Who is her husband? What is happening in her temple? What gods is she bringing to this palace? I'm asking you a question again. Who, which Jezebel is sitting in our palace today? Okay. Um, okay. Okay. All right. Yeah. Uh, no, 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 go, go, go ahead. Go ahead, man. Okay. No, I'm saying. Um, fortunately, I'm talking to a theologian. I'm saying I agree with uh, my 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 colleague here about the you know the the issue of revelation um, referring to the church as a woman. I I I totally agree with that. What yeah. I said, which I'm going to, to, to say it again, I don't think Revelation is referring to the church and Jezebel as Africa and foreigners. That's, that, that's what I'm saying, because I've said that would suggest that the final church will only be African. If it means the final church will only be African. And if you are not African, you cannot be part of the church. That, that's point what I am saying. I have a problem of, with facing the church in correction. Africa. I'm I have a problem saying, with that. I'm not saying the church, Africa is Jezebel. No, Mama Tamela. I am saying the church, the church which is the Catholic church, the colonial church, has actually worked with the government to disenfranchise Naboth from his vineyard. The church has been involved in helping colonialists to yeah. take away land from Africa. I'm not saying yeah. the church is just 
I'm not saying the church is the only African. I'm looking at it as an estate passage. The estate of Naboth, which is juxtaposed close to the palace of Ahab. How and what was the involvement of Jezebel to remove that land from the hands of Naboth to the hands of Ahab? Question. If this woman is given to us in the New Testament, what has been the behavior of the modern church? Again, in disenfranchising the African from his estate. That's the question I'm asking. I'm not saying the church is Jezebel. I'm putting context that the behavior of Jezebel in the Old Testament has not changed in the colonial New Testament. And, and well, we have a comment. Not... Yeah, I, I just no, I just needed to throw in a comment from Lana Gia on Facebook saying, um, what is the church's role in Africa's demise? And what would the church role be in Africa's recovery? Okay, um, Lana Gia just brings this uh, this point in. Okay, uh, Wenya, you wanted to say something? Yeah, look, look I was saying, I, I was saying, re remember that, um, uh, what's her name, Jezebel, is of course not God's church as we know. Um, but the, the, the principle of Jezebel is, is the... Is, 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 op is an opposition to God's principles. Now, if as a church, we fail in our duty to assert or to, to, to put out what thus saith the Lord, by virtue of doing that, we are then placing Jezebel in the palace to do as, as she pleases. But the unfortunate reality is that we will be the victims. Um, so in other words, the failure of the church to do what it's supposed to do opens the gate for Jezebel to come in and do that which uh, Satan wants to do because that is the, that is the spirit be, behind Jezebel. Now, now, now com, coming, to, coming home, uh, and I'm saying that uh, for us, Jezebel is a wake-up call, actually, to say, look, if, if you are not actively involved in making sure that the people are getting the service that they should get from, from the church, not only from the church, let's drill down the church, from a church member who has an influence over a, over a community, over his own family, over in, in his in or her workplace, whatever that, whatever that environment is. That's, that's my role, that is your role. Now, if you fail to do that in your community, in your family, in, in, your, in, your, in, your, in your workplace, by virtue of doing that, you are allowing Jezebel to take the proverbial vineyard of Naboth. You know, so, so, so in other words, what this tells us, as we look, as we look at the nearness of Christ, what this means to us is that uh, we need to be vigilant. We need to start waking up. We need to confront uh, Jezebel, as it were, by making sure that every human being on earth gets to know who God is. But Can I chip in a bit? I think Mapumla has gone blank there. Yeah, 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 please. Can I chip in a bit? Another element that we want to look also is this concept in Jezebel and Ab's story called proximity to enmity. How close are we? How close are our resources to the palace of Ahab? How close is our property to those that want to take it away from us? And what is very fascinating for me on this story is that a, a piece of land, which is a vineyard, yes. has long-term plants on it. Ahab wants to remove the long-term plants and he wants to plant vegetables. He wants to remove the vines and yes. plant the vegetables. Yes. Now, that's very interesting for me. How do you, for, how do you remove long-term plants to put short-term, you know, vegetables. In what way have we been duped to remove the long-term issues 
and begin to discuss vegetable issues. And is it really, is it really a, 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 a matter of people undermining our inheritance, which has been handed over to us? What is it that uh, Naboth had in his hand, which uh, Jezebel and Ahab wanted to remove and replace with temporal things? That becomes a practical lesson in life. When you put your things too close to Jezebel, she will remove the long-term plants and leave you with vegetables, short-term crops. And those who plant vegetables will never eat fruits. And, and look, that, that goes back, uh, uh, Bishop, to what we were talking about earlier, the issue of identity. That is sometimes, sometimes we, we can blame the enemy and yet, actually, we are the we are the enemy. We are our own enemies, you know. Uh, uh, because I mean, you are taking this to to, to a to a, a, a political level. Uh, look, if you look at the numbers of uh, black people versus white people, you will you will begin to see that uh, uh, financially. You begin to see that. Uh, even though we are centenaires and they are millionaires, but when you put together our sense, uh, we become more powerful than those few millionaires in our midst. And therefore, if we were to learn to put together our sense and begin to do things, to do business with ourselves, begin to support our own causes, begin to establish institu uh, institutions that will advance our own vines, then what that will do, it will assure that the future of the, of, of the coming generation is intact. But if we are failing ourselves to make sure that we convert ourselves from being centenaires to billionaires by the resources, the little resources that we have, we will, we will continue to blame the enemy instead of doing what we can with what we have. Can, can I also preach the good news? After yeah. the political, I mean, I try to I try to give a, a biblical conversation, and I swung my bets to the religious platform. I swing again to the to the political platform. But while we are on that, we also want to speak to the hope that is on the passage of Jezebel, that yeah. Jezebel uh, died with dignity when she heard that uh, uh, Jehu is coming to kill her. She powdered her face. She had makeup. I like that part of her character, by the way. You know, this is a woman when she knows that she's going to die, she will still do makeup and fix her hair and sit on her chair and wait for her funeral. You know, that's some good attitude right there. But the ending of this, the ending of this corrupt system, the ending of this church, the ending of this wicked organization is prophesied right in the book there. Because if the story of uh, Jezebel in the Old Testament can be extrapolated in the New Testament, then we're actually hearing the destruction of Jezebel in the New Testament, that she was pushed from the window, her body cluttered to the ground, and dogs ate her up. If we yes. should consider this to be the false church that is sitting on a window, sitting on a high place of our moral judgments and ethical, ethical emulation, drafting for us policies of behavior, and etc. But in her wickedness, she sits there. We have a prophecy of what happened to Jezebel, and if that prophecy should be fulfilled in the New Testament, then we're actually being told of how the church will fall from the window, how this wicked woman will fall from the window and break to the ground and her body will be eaten by dogs. Now, this is the final demise of the false church, false religion, false education, false spirituality, which right now gloats in her makeup, gloats in her weave, sitting on the window, of this world civilization. But I want to tell you good news. Her destruction will fall upon her like lightning and her body will be eaten on the ground by dogs. This thing we call religion. Now the Bible is true. There will come a time when people will eat it up and throw it to the ground and no one will redeem it. Gentlemen, I, I want you, and that, that's a very interesting point that you've made there, Bishop Maponga. I, 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 I want you to address particularly young people before we wrap it up. Um, the, it's amazing how fast time goes. Um, we are at, we're around three minutes to the hour, uh, like three to three, you know. 
how do you use your position of power? That, that becomes important. If there's one good thing that we learn from Jezebel in the Bible, learning a good thing from a deadly bad person is how to make use of everything we've been given. She was given what she was given and she made good use of it. What have you been given? And how good do you make use of what you have been given? Are you a good custody of uh, a custodian of what you've been given? We see her position, we see her relationship, we see uh, her beauty, we see her wealth, and all of that, and her influence to advance and serve her agenda, mm -hmm. and 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 it becomes important. Then I need us to reflect in our, you know, in our in our closing statement for today. I I I would love that we come back and do justice to wrap it up. And I like the fact that a Bishop Mabonga said, let me also give you good news that she will fall, she'll be crushed and all of that. The other side of the coin, when you are multi-talented, there are young people in churches and communities that are multi-talented. They can preach, they can teach, they can sing, they can, they can do this, they can do that. Is what kind of a custodian are you of what you've been given? of what you've been taught. Let, let's talk to that as we wrap up part one, please. Who is going first? Go ahead. Go ahead. I want, I want to agree with uh, Umamu Tamela on that one, Pastor Tamela, where she highlighted yeah, so that. Uh, her, battery, her battery died, by the way. I think she has uh, um, load shedding issues. She wrote to me on the side, and she will be there, however, in part two. Yeah, go ahead then, Marara. I wanted to agree with what she said, uh, particularly addressing the young people, that uh, the yeah. fact that you are talented and you are gifted, be careful that actually sometimes some of these gifts can become a passport to your, to your funeral. Uh, your, if you become too ambitious to an extent that you lose moral, moral uh, compasses of not knowing you have the whole land, the whole country of, of Israel is at your disposal and you end up actually envying one small little piece of land that belongs to other one. That gives me a very critical, critical point, which I want to conclude with, that whatever the kings are doing in their palaces affects the nation at large. Whatever kings and leaders are doing in their private spaces, Israel ended up in a drought for three years, three and a half years, until Elijah popped in again to discuss and clean up the mess. So maybe we need to find out again the power of your privacy as young people and what is the impact, what will happen to the revelation and the hand of God to implement the curse on a nation because of the poor decision of a leader. So as young people, let's be careful of the decision that we make and be careful if you are not smart enough, this devil will make you into a vegetable. No wonder when you're on drugs, they say you have become a vegetable. Yeah, it's such a healthy yeah. thing. I Thank mean, you. that's a very that's yeah. insulting yeah. To, to say people that like a vegetable as if vegetable is useless, man. That's that's not right. Yeah, I know. I know you're a vegetarian, <laughs> and what you eat is what, <laughs> is what you become. So if you eat too much vegetables, you end up as a vegetable. Also. <laughs> <laughs> look, 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 look. One, one, one. Your of, party short yeah. way. Yeah, if, if there is one thing, great, important thing you can learn from the story of Jezebel is, is the importance of using what God has given you um, uh, very efficiently, very effectively. That for me <clears throat> is, is critical because look, all of us uh, were born with a gift. No one is born... Uh, uh, to be to be bad, no one is born to be evil. Uh, when you look at Genesis chapter one, uh, from verse twenty six uh, and the following, where God says, "Let us make man our own image," and then He says, "He says to them, uh, uh, they must go and have authority over everything that God had created," meaning that God had given them a potential to lead. Because you can't have authority over something, you can't have. You, you, you can't be over something 
or, or God cannot place you to be irresponsible for something unless he has given you the ability or the capability to do that which you, you, you are supposed to do. And therefore, the implication is that uh, when God created us, he gave us that ability to lead, firstly, at a personal level. And that, for me, is critical because all of us have gifts. And the question is, are you using your gifts, your opportunities, in the manner that will benefit not only your humanity, but also will provide an opportunity for others to see Jesus when he comes? But for me, the first thing, will it benefit? Is your life benefit humanity? Because sometimes we are so heavenly minded and no earthly good. And, and that's dangerous also. That's very dangerous. So, so for me, that's important. So that's the question, introspection, all of us might, must, must make as we go through this coming, we can say, look at your qualities that God has given you and be able to say out of these qualities, even if you line up three qualities, even if there are three, and you say out of these three qualities, how is humanity benefiting from me of these qualities? Because I don't want to, I mean, some of you know me by now, I'm a very practical person. And ask the question, how is humanity benefiting me consistently over these qualities? And then you can take it from there and can, you can grow from there. But, but if we're waiting for somebody else in the palace to make things happen, it will never happen. You have, you have a gift, you have opportunities, and you must do the same. Look, look at, at, at uh, Jezebel. Jezebel used her position, he, she used her relationships, she used her beauty, she used her wealth, she used her influence. But unfortunately, all of these things were for her own benefit. I'm saying all of us have the same things. Use these things to benefit humanity. Thank you, Wayne. Wow. Okay. I just love to to uh, to uh, to thank you. You know, um, in the panel, um, it looks like you've wrapped it up all. The uh, the temperature. I like this comment. The temperature of a nation is measured by the quality of the church. Let me say this again, and I'm reading it. Okay, I'm quoting Joshua Maponga here. The temperature of a nation is measured by the quality of the church. The kingdom government bows to religion. What sort of religion have you got in your country? Okay, there are, there are countries there that are known to be uh, strict and, and all of this, where you find zero crime and whatever. When you look back, you, they are religion. There are countries where, in my traveling around Africa, for instance, having been to some of the countries where the majority um, people, you know, follow um, Islamic um, religion, uh, I've been to Egypt, to Tunisia, Morocco, and, and all these countries, and I've discovered that the influence of the people, the way they think, the way they behave, the tone in the constitution of the land is determined by the religion. You still we chop your hands. You still we chop your hands. You know. So the issue of the religion is very important. You know, when we apostatize in the religion, we're killing the they, we we are actually corrupting the constitution of the country. And it doesn't benefit the people in the country. One of the disadvantages of a democracy like ours is when you have seven religions or so and you're not sure which one really to end up listening to. Today, we spoke about Jezebel. We, I think we, we did a lot of applications and interpretations also. We, we jumped to the future. We, we came back to, to the present and we stepped back to the past as well. So we did all of those. And the question is, are there girls today that are named after Jezebel? <laughs> the parents, the parents, the parents that, that still give birth to girls and the parents that are expecting, is there anybody that is calling their girl Jezebel? And if not, why not? Is, has Jezebel completely lost any opportunity for eternity? <laughs> yeah, Jeze Jezebel shall die. Jezebel shall reap what he sow. Yeah, yeah, Jezebel. <laughs> and, 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 and lastly, Wenya, 
and, and this is a warning to all of us, and that is failure to be faithful results into us becoming Jezebelic because there's nothing in between. There is nothing in between. Failure to be faithful in, in, in your post where God has placed you uh, results to you becoming Jezebelic. There is nothing in between. Parting shot, uh, Joshua Maponga, 30 seconds. In my 30 seconds, uh, be so sure. Be so sure of what you believe that even when you are in a palace, you don't need to be scared. I think it's negative, but it's positive. Stand your ground even when you are in a foreign land. And I think Jezebel represents a, a, a truthful child who was trained by the parents and they Absolutely. trained very well. And Absolutely. even if we are, reading, we are reading a story from the Christian perspective yes. and we see there's a bad influence, but mm. from the family perspective, here is a child who was trained and developed and she stood for what she believed right up to the end of time. So please, don't forget, don't forget the teachings of your fathers. Train up a child in the way they should grow so that when they are grown up, they will not part away from it. I'm taking a negative point, but I'm, I'm speaking to it positively in terms of the character which Jezebel became. She stood her ground in a yeah. foreign land. That's positive. She even converted the whole nation. She confused, she confused the whole nation. One woman, one woman well-trained, one woman well-trained can confuse the whole nation. That's influence. Sure. That's influence. Sure. Yeah, that's amazing. That, that's powerful. Okay, Pastor Mbui Kamela was at least able to write to us her parting shot. She sends us her parting shot saying the biggest mistake that the Jewish people did was to think that God's kingdom was supposed to be a new state government. And, and that is why they rejected Jesus, because he was not the Messiah they were expecting. In what ways could we as Africans make that same mistake? I, I, I don't know, Gwen. Maybe we have to come back and wrap it up next week. But uh, you, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm amazed at, at how deep the story of Jezebel is how deep and picking up something good in it from a bad from a bad thing you know what what uh, a bishop maponga has just said now a a loyal highly highly trained girl that could change any religion or or corrupt any group of people because she was highly trained and she was good and executing what she was trained at. It's that it did not work for King Ahab and the Israelites and all of that. Let's go for part yeah. two. Yeah, we have to do that. Gentlemen, yeah. thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Usis Mbui. Um, I hope that Lord Sheringa came out next week. And uh, thank you, uh, Bishop Marara Maponga. To you folks that were watching at home, to those that sent contributions, and uh, to those, even those that who did not send contributions, only even those who just like the program on Facebook, and even those who just uh, subscribe to the channel on YouTube, just subscribe on YouTube. Thank you so much. We love you as much as you love us. Thank you so much. Yeah. We'll see you next week. Goodbye.